hot compost. Hot compost. <laughs> Anybody else feeling a sudden urge to organically break down their food waste? I often wonder if sustainability hasn't been marketed to us right. Most of us want to be more sustainable. Maybe we just haven't seen a version of it we can relate to. We tend to see the extremes of conservation and overconsumption. We feel the pressure of not doing enough or not having enough. Ultimately, we end up in this endless cycle of feeling guilty or feeling greedy. But it doesn't have to be this way. What if I told you we could have it all? What if I told you there was a way we could have connection and convenience, simplicity and lifestyle, conservation and consumption? What if I told you there was a way we could make sustainability sustainable? Sounds good, right? So, what's getting in the way? I reckon it might just be bad marketing. What is being marketed to us is to consume. There's a trillion dollar marketing industry convincing us that buying and consuming feels good. It'll make our lashes longer, make our family better looking, make our lives 86.4% better. Results may vary. I know because it was my job. My first career was in the international world of fast-moving consumer goods. My job became to understand how we think and behave as shoppers. I'd analyse all the data that's created every time we swipe a card. Just pretend I'm not here, I'd say. It's very weird, slightly voyeuristic, but at the same time, really fascinating. There's an army of people like the former me around the world whose job it is to understand how we think and behave as shoppers. Then layer on top of that, sales and marketing. It's no wonder we're consuming so much. But here's the thing. Our consumption, what we use and how we use it, creates our impact on the world around us. That's our footprint. The clothes we wear, the food we eat, the electricity we use, the way we get around, the manufacturing that goes into the stuff that we buy, the waste we create. How and what we consume is our impact. And we're consuming a lot. Currently, at the rate we're consuming, it's estimated we need 1.6 planets to support the resources we're using, which is a bit of a problem. This is our backup plan makes you realise that maybe the simplest thing to do is just to figure out a way to look after the one we've already got, right? So we're consuming a lot, but the flip side of consuming less ain't really cutting it with the masses. We need a version of sustainability that's appealing and relatable to the mainstream. We need a narrative that's not too heavy and not too light, but that encourages and inspires us. I reckon what we need is a kick-ass marketing campaign. A campaign to convince us that consuming less feels good. Any good campaign starts with the customer at the heart of it. So let's start by meeting one of ours. Her name is Amy. She's 38 years old. She has 2.4 children and a golden labradoodle. She appreciates nice things, and she loves that surge of dopamine she gets when she buys something new. But she doesn't like that guilty feeling she gets when she sees something like an image of a turtle with a straw jammed in its nose. This is the type of thing that Amy might say to us at a focus group. Oh, hi, I'm Amy. Um, I want to do what's right for the planet. I just don't have much time at the moment. <laughs> Life's super busy. <laughs> I want to do the right thing, but, but it can't cost me any more money. And I don't want it to compromise my lifestyle. Like, I still want to be able to go on the good holidays. And I don't want it to make my kids the weird ones at school. I'm, I'm happy to do the right thing, and it, it's kind of embarrassing to admit it, but it just has to fit in with my lifestyle. I get it, Amy. <laughs> I kind of feel the same. And I think, honestly, maybe a lot of us do. For a long time, my reality was all about consumerism. It was my job to convince us to buy and consume more, and I was a personal convert. I was a big fan trying to consume my way to happiness. 
But then I started on a personal journey towards living more sustainably, a journey that became about questioning every aspect of my consumption. Look, first to admit, might have taken things a bit far to begin with. <laughs> kind of went from zero to 100. <laughs> Top speed being when my neighbour caught me composting my husband's old underwear. <laughs> I'd gone from consuming the planet to being consumed by trying to save the planet, and it was exhausting. But over time, I figured out a way to consume not too much and not too little, but in a way that's just right for me and the planet. So what kind of thing do we need to say to get people like you and me and Amy on board? What kind of campaign might make us feel like sustainability is just right for us? We tend to see sustainability as this big other thing. This thing will do when? This thing that has standards and requirements that need to be met. But it turns out there's no secret handshake. There's no mandate to wear socks and sandals. We don't all have to sell our cars and eat nothing but free-range, dolphin-friendly wheatgrass. Changing our consumption can be as simple as shifting our mindset. We tend to consume on autopilot. Amy wants something, she buys it. She's done with it, throws it away and buys another one. So what could we say to Amy that might help her think differently? We tell her that it's as simple as flicking a switch into that conscious part of her brain. It's a micro pause before she buys or consumes something to go, huh, do I really need it? Do I really want it? Maybe it's a conscious moment. Maybe she'll sleep on it. Maybe she'll put it into her virtual shopping cart and leave it there for a couple of days. She'll likely realize she doesn't want half the stuff she thought she did. And for the thing, things that she does, she can just ask herself, can I make a better choice? Can I buy it secondhand or rent or borrow it? Can I buy it locally made or without packaging? Can I buy it from a company that's doing social good? It's mindful consumption. It's a slight shift in our thinking. It's a micro pause in the busyness of life. And it's no big deal. Jacob got this pen at a conference he went to. Currently, the marketing tells Jacob to have as many pens as he wants. Buy them in a box of a thousand. It's just a pen. The problem is, is that we're buying using and throwing away more than at any other time in history, we've become super disposable. I'm not saying we have to rinse and reuse our tea bags like our great grandparents might have, but it actually feels really nice to reconnect with the value of things. The impact of what we buy, use and throw away is not just what we see, it's everything that came before. Take this pen. Oil was drilled for the plastic, metal was mined for the spring and the tip, then it was probably loaded onto a big ship and moved to a massive factory where it's made into a pen, then probably loaded onto another enormous ship and moved halfway around the world where it's packaged up, put onto a plastic wrap pallet, loaded onto a truck, moved, put into a goodie bag and then given out free at the conference that Jacob was at. So without making Jacob feel guilty, how do we help him to be less disposable? Maybe, instead of Jacob taking the pen and it ending up broken in the bottom of his bag or in the third drawer down in the kitchen where all good pens go to die, Jacob could just say, oh, no, thanks. I've already got one. Or if he does need it, he takes it. But he uses it. <laughs> he looks after it. He appreciates it. It feels good to value the things that we have. Grace knows all about the problem of garage creep. She moved into a new house and it had this brilliantly empty garage. But somehow, over time, stuff just crept in. So it was so full of stuff, she couldn't fit her car in it anymore. Grace feels overwhelmed with the amount of stuff she has. The kids' toys, the clothes, the furniture, all the throw pillows. 
The more stuff we have, the more we have to look after and maintain, to tidy up and organise, to feel overwhelmed by, to spend all our money on. Grace is not a minimalist. She doesn't only want to own three Swiss Army knives, half a couch and one shoe. She doesn't need to fit her life into a backpack so she can travel the world. She's got children, garden furniture, a macrame hobby. <laughs> so what could we say to Grace that might help her think that there's another way? Maybe Grace doesn't need to feel the pressure to upgrade to the 300 square metre house with four bathrooms, a portico, and a huge mortgage. Maybe she can unsubscribe from the constant marketing emails that make her feel pressured to continuously upgrade her home decor. Maybe Grace doesn't need a wardrobe that's so jammed full of stuff she feels overcome with decision fatigue every time she opens the door. Maybe she can have a wardrobe that's a quarter of the size, only has things in there that she truly loves and will last for a really long time. Maybe it would help Grace to understand a concept called the spotlight effect, which means that we think people notice us, what we have and what we wear, way more than they actually do. Turns out we're all far too busy focusing on ourselves. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, Grace could wear her favourite 10 year old blue top over and over again, and no one would even notice. Having less makes life simpler. Rachel was convinced that she could buy her way to convenience. But in a weird twist of irony, she's just spending more of her busy life shopping to buy things to save her time. One survey found that females spend 399 hours and 46 minutes a year shopping. That's 10 working weeks of time. Now, Rachel doesn't have the time or the inclination to spend all her weekends at home crocheting Brussels sprouts or whittling her own clothes. So what could we say to Rachel that might help feel like there's an alternative? Imagine Rachel was faced with this. She's halfway through making a pie, and she realises she's run out of those super convenient pre-frozen sheets of pastry. Every inch of her being wants to jump in her car and drive the four minutes each way to the supermarket to buy some more. But then she wonders, how hard could it be to make myself? She's not really a baker, but how can anything with that much butter in it taste bad? 16 minutes later, she has a double batch of pastry. Time taken to drive to the supermarket and buy pastry, 24 minutes, 50% longer. Because by the time you get out of your house clothes, get the kids in the car, drive, find a park, find what you're looking for, buy eight other things that you didn't realise you needed, wonder how you've just spent $120, find your car, drive home, park, unpack. Clearly sounds familiar. Shopping less saves time. Three years ago, Marcus, bought a bike. He'd seen it advertised in a European lifestyle magazine, and he had a romantic notion about saving the planet by riding his bike to work every day with his laptop, a French stick, and a bottle of wine in the basket. <laughs> but you see, Marcus is what we would call a fair weather cyclist. <laughs> he only likes to ride his bike if it's not too cold or too hot or too wet, or too windy. It all just got a bit hard. <laughs> and Marcus feels guilty, but his bike's still in the garage. What could we say to Marcus that might help motivate him to start? We tell him not to let perfect get in the way of good. Maybe Marcus can ride his bike to work one day a week. Choose a day when the weather's good. Sounds way more achievable, right? Riding his bike to work one day a week is not perfect, but it is fundamentally better than not riding his bike at all. Imperfect action is still action. If we all focused on just doing a little bit better by the planet, 
Man, how awesome would that be? Will is just one person. And he feels like what he does won't make a difference for the enormity of the planet. He's waiting for science, big business, and the government to sort things out. And look, I am not saying they're off the hook. They need to be doing everything they can. But what could we say to Will that might make him feel that what he does can make a difference? Will's mum bought him a reusable coffee cup for Christmas. Will works in a large corporate office, and every day, 10 of them will go out for their caffeine fix. Will takes his cup along. A few people in the group take the mick out of him for trying to save the whales. But within one week, three people in that group are using reusable coffee cups. Within three weeks, every single person in that group is using a reusable coffee cup. As humans, we are influenced by social norms. We look to those around us to inform our decisions and our behaviours. We are never one person taking one action. Change ripples out. It's what got us to where we are, and it can help get us out. Look, I don't know if any of you guys have clicked on yet, but apart from the golden labradoodle and the macrame habit, all of these people are actually me. The campaign's a reflection of my journey to find a middle ground between the pressure of not having enough and the guilt of not doing enough. My journey to find a way to live more lightly on the planet in a way that works for me and my family. I've pretty much flipped and reversed everything I knew about consumption. I used to be about understanding shopper behavior to get us to buy more. Now my job is to understand human behavior to get us to consume less. I've learned that making people feel guilty doesn't motivate them to change. We pretty much all know that we need to be doing more for the planet. But we need to feel good about it. We need to surround ourselves with more of the narrative that encourages and motivates us. I went into this journey looking to decrease my impact. What I found was simplicity and time and a sense of connection. I love that my kids are growing up knowing how to value the things that they have, feeling like they're part of something way bigger than themselves and that they know how to compost their own underwear. <laughs> I'm not gonna single-handedly halt climate change but I've found a way to make a difference that works for me. And it feels really good. Slowing my consumption has been better for the well-being of the planet, but it has been undeniably better for my own well-being. Turns out, we can have it all. <laughs>